Her name's Katya. That's her. I want her. <laughs> Frank's somebody who's incredibly calm and a good cop and he's kind of unflappable in terms of his police work. This is purely personal and emotional. I think he's terrified to find her, but he's terrified not to find her. No, 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 that's not why I'm here. So we kind of understand that this has been a quest. He's been to a lot of different places, and I think he's getting more and more impatient, more and more frazzled as he's trying to find her. Maybe it was Papa T in them. Maybe it was Papa T in them what? Skim some. Deciding you want to be a gangster and trying to start small and build up. How do you expect to run a blind pig? without underage girls. They're real practical problems. <laughs> when Reverend Lowdown's crew kind of comes in and helps him and Papa T and those guys, suddenly you're, this is bigger and, and he's trying to get a handle on it. Anyway, Shut up! Boy. Shut your mouth! And he's out of his element. How are we gonna make this right? <laughs> Frank sees the international Maya and Damon's bar in the internal affairs file that Boyd shows him. I'm here to talk about you and Damon. Official business detective? As a friend. There's sort of a big brother relationship with Frank and Maya. Maya, whatever it is you're into, stop. Maya's ex-husband, Sean, who we meet in this episode, was sort of a protege of Frank's and worked with him. Stop! Stop running or I'll shoot your ass! Well, Sean is an ex-cop who he knew and worked with. She looked like crap and seemed even worse. <laughs> I knew it! Yeah! I think he's comfortable with Sean because Sean isn't a threat. Sean is so far gone that it's like you're telling secrets to a mute, somebody who will never repeat them. In the midst of all this stuff that's going on with Frank, there's no one he can talk to. You hear about Brendan McKenna? It's not like he's gonna go and confess to Sean. What about him, that trick? But it's someone he can just relax and be himself. At the end of that episode, Sean is smoking crack on Frank's porch, and... Don't you quit. The thing that I think is important about that scene is that there's no judgment from Frank. It's just kind of like, this is just the way it is. Thanks. That boy gay as them boys down in Atlanta. What boys? He wasn't gay, ma. That boy liked my man more than I did. Billy's mother, she's sort of a very irreverent character. He run a little church off Gratiot in Six Mile ever since he found religion. Religion, my black ass. I'm very sorry for your loss and she almost is speaking badly of her son even though he's just been killed and even though she's hurting. Children dying every day! And the cops don't come around until after they're dead. The cops must have to deal with that all the time. And yet they still need to do their job and they still need to get as many answers out of this person as they can. Or they can't be too delicate because then they might not get what they want. Damon is really riled by Skeels coming by. Iconis. We're not in Greek town right now. He feels like this guy let his dad dry. The dad took everything personal. And he doesn't want to be his dad. That's because my father was a weak ass bitch. He doesn't want to be somebody that's under somebody else's thumb. He was your father. It strikes right to the heart of all those insecurities. Old timer, you on the wrong side of town. I think Joe is frightened that the thing that he used against Frank, which is Frank's obsession with Katya, is going to come back and bite us on the ass. I think he's desperate to find her, that Catacombs is the bottom of the places he might be able to find her. And I think by the time he gets there, he's searching to see if she's hit, hit the bottom, but he's kind of hit a certain bottom. And I think when there's that surrogate Katya scene, at that point he's so tired and so fragile and wants to feel good in any way he can. What it does is lay bare Frank's psychological state at that moment. He's with somebody who he knows is not Katya. It's your real name. Katya. This isn't real and it isn't her. So there is a melancholy and a sadness and a just emptiness in the knowledge that this setup that he's created, that he's going to take part in and pretend is real, is not real. Sorry. And he knows it isn't real. And he doesn't run away from it and think, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to dive in here. He keeps going. He keeps going in with this person that he knows isn't the right person. He says, I don't want to be me. I don't want you to be you. We'll be whoever you want. It's a level of exhaustion emotionally and physically that he feels like he has to give into because he hasn't fulfilled the quest. Say your name, please. Low Winter Sun. New episodes premiere Sunday nights at 10, only on AMC. For more exclusive video, go to amc.com.